Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video on how to create your own zine. If you've never heard of a zine before, it's a little book. It's actually short for magazine. So this is like a miniature magazine and they can be about any topic you want. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made this one, which is actually a travel guide for a spot in my state that my family and I visit every summer. And I just wrote about 10 of my favorite places to visit in that spot. But you can make a zine about anything you want. In a second, there'll be some ideas for zines on your screen and you can do those or you can do anything else you can think of which is really fun and exciting and I think these are really good for being creative and expressing yourself and your interests. So here are some ideas for zine topics. You could create a cookbook of family recipes or recipes that go around a certain season or event. You could create a comic or another illustrated short story. You could create a poetry book or a book of songs or other little rhymes. Or you could create a travel guide like I'm going to be doing in this video. Of course, you can do any idea you want and be sure to let me know what kind of zine you're making in the comments down below. Before we get too far into the video, I wanted to let you all know that I have a post on my website that relates to this video. It's a blog post that has templates that I'm going to be using here in this tutorial that will help you line up the pages of your zine for printing. It also gives you some editing software tools and different ideas more technical that I'm going to be going into in this video for how to create your zine and make it high quality and how to edit the pictures and some troubleshooting ideas for printing your zine because I know that is something that people have a lot of trouble with. Once you've decided what kind of zine you're going to be making, it's time to think about the illustrations that you want to have. Now, I like to do illustrating on my iPad Pro, but as you can see right here, I did some pencil illustrations that I made into my bug zine before I had my iPad. Either way, you can make really good illustrations, and I actually will link a scanning app down below that I use on my iPad and iPhone to scan in my um, analog style drawings to put them into my zine pages on the computer and edit them online for good printing quality. If you don't have a scanner, that app works really well, so I'll make sure that I leave that down below for you all. Additionally, I like to do the pictures first just so you can kind of size your text around it. The text is easy to go back in and edit if it doesn't fit properly with your illustrations. The illustrations will be a lot more time consuming to go back in and edit if the text doesn't fit properly. So I would recommend having a rough idea of what you, what you want to say on each page and then drawing an illustration that goes with it or several illustrations. And if you have photographs that you've taken or those kind of things, you can totally use those too. I've definitely done that in the past and as I said, you can do digital or analog or traditional drawing. Um, one thing that I would recommend is making sure that your colors are bright if you have a color printer. If you don't have a color printer, you can totally still make a zine and just do it in black and white. You can add color later or just leave them black and white. It's totally up to you. So one thing that you're going to want to keep in mind when you're doing your illustrations and getting a better idea of the pages that are going to be in your zine is that the number of pages you're going to want to do should be a multiple of eight. A regular size sheet of paper will fit four pages on the front and four on the back and then you'll cut that sheet of paper in half and fold it to create your zine. I would totally recommend checking out my blog post because I have it in a lot more technical step-by-step -step detail that you can go back and read at your own pace and experiment to what sizes work best with your printer and your computer. So in this zine I actually use two full-size pieces of paper to print each zine. So I have 16 pages total, four on the front and four on the back of two sheets. That's just because I had more information that would fit on four sheets on the front and the back. So my zine did end up being 16 pages, which is the longest zine I've made, but you can totally make them longer or shorter, as little as eight and as many as you want, really. So you can totally get creative and experiment with the number of pages based on the topic of your book and how much content you want it to have. So here are some time lapses from my iPad of the other pages in my zine. Um, I just used the Procreate app and the Apple Pencil. That's the one you saw me using previously as well. I'm just using the ratio of an 8.5 and, and 11 by 11 sheet of paper for each of the pages. And there's more details on my blog for sizing and whatever else. So you can have a seamless zine making experience, um, unlike me, my first couple zines. So as you'll see, I left 
space below the illustration and the title to type out my text, which I did later on the computer, and we'll get to that step in a second. So for now, just enjoy these little time lapses that the lovely Procreate app made automatically for me. Love that. Here we go. So once you've got all your illustrations done, it's about time to start creating the content text on each of your pages. So I did this just on my uh, MacBook Air and I used the Photos app, although you can use several other editing softwares that are free online or come free on your computer. Um, I have some linked in that same blog post that I keep referencing if you're looking for a good free one. You could do this in an app if you don't have access to a computer, that's totally good as well. Um, I just did some research on like a Wikipedia page and on the website for this um, location that I was writing about just to make sure all my information was accurate and I just typed it out in a nice font that I thought went well and did my page layouts that way. I made sure that I kept all my page layouts the same throughout the zine. This is totally optional but I think it gives it a nice cohesive look uh, so it kind of flows like a real magazine or a real book. So you can kind of do whatever you want, just type out whatever you want. Um, you can hand write these as well, I did that before, and you can just scan them in and that's really good as well. It just gives it a more personal touch. I've even used my typewriter and glued them in and scanned them. You can do whatever you want. Be creative. Okay, this is the fun part, and by fun I mean frustrating. As you can see, I have this lined paper that I use to fold and make templates of where each page needs to be on my printing document when I created it. I use this template that you're seeing here, and that's on my blog, that's the one I keep talking about. And then I lined up my pages on it in the proper uh, sequence, I guess, to print. And I had to print maybe three or four different trials and went back and adjusted little things each time to make sure that the edges lined up, especially on that map spread that you're seeing right now. That one was difficult because I had to have it line up between the two pages, but I did eventually get it to work. You're just going to have to have some patience and it totally depends on your printer, how close you can get to the margins. My printer is pretty new so I can get pretty close to the edge, but on older printers I know they don't print closer to the margins. So it just depends on what you have and what you have available to you. Um, I printed mine in color, but I made sure that I printed all my test prints in black and white because I didn't want to use a bunch of colored ink on the four or five copies of the zine I printed that didn't work out. So yep, that's how I did it. Just be patient and it will work out. You just have to keep trying. Okay, this is the last and final step, and that is binding your zine. I used my sewing machine because I'm extra and I like it to be sewn like a real book. You can totally be a normal person and use a stapler, or you can hand sew it. You could, um, you could use some little brads, you could tape it maybe, you could uh, leave it unsewn and have it a very free flowing book. I don't know. You can do whatever you want. I recommend sewing. It's sturdy and it looks pretty and... You don't have to bend your page sheet to fit into your stapler because you know I don't have one of those fancy book binding staplers, but maybe you do and that's great for you. Anyway, you can bind the book any way you want. Like I said, I like sewing it, but that's just because I like being an overachiever. Do it however you want. Uh, have fun.